Hey everybody, this is Clay, the Average Gamer, and today I'm bringing to you kind of my first impressions here on uh, the newly released Duke Nukem game. And I'm starting off with, uh, this This game actually has quite a few things to do, so I'm starting off with some of the multiplayer. Whenever I got this game and, and threw it in my console the very first, uh, the multiplayer was the first thing that I actually threw in. What you're ha watching here is, um, like the Team Deathmatch, of course it is cleverly named Team Deathmatch. Duke match. <laughs> so uh, this is actually the first game that I ended up playing and so I, as I go through these multiplayer I want to just kind of give you some of my initial thoughts on the multiplayer and, and the very first thing I knew is whenever I, whenever I put this uh, game in and started actually rolling on the multiplayer um, it was pretty easy to figure out. I mean uh, the button configuration everything was just like a lot of the uh, first person shooters that you know you've picked up and put in a console and played um, for quite some time. Uh, however, I, I will say, like, the uh, sensitivity and the movement, it seemed pretty jerky and hard for me to get used to. Uh, I think by default this was set on 4, and, and 4 seemed, like, uh, pretty hardcore. I mean, you can see right here my aim is just all over the place, and so i, I got to go down here and try to uh, adjust the sensitivity um, just to kind of keep myself from uh, doing that again um, but I don't know it may be easy for people that are used to playing on a very high sensitivity for the first person shooters I typically um, am low I actually moved it down from a two here and uh, even move it down all the way to one um, in, in future games um, but this is definitely an old school first person shooter I mean you're running around you're picking up uh, you start with a pistol uh, you're running around maps and and you're picking up random guns off of uh, off of the ground and then uh, just going to town on whoever runs in front of you, depending on what game type you're you're actually playing. So um, again, this was my my very first first game. So you see me, I have absolutely no idea where I'm going. I'm, I'm trying to to take aim on, on people and um, finding it pretty difficult to, to do. So anyway, um, the next one that we get to watch here in uh, in just a minute is actually like a, a headquarters uh, game. So basically there are uh, capture points um, that you run to and, and the, the uh, uh, headquarters is called Hail to the King. So I, I'm, I'm taking it as plain, plain words like King of the Mountain or, or something to that effect. Uh, and anyway, so um, this right here is uh, the beginning of, or kind of in the middle of the game of a, a Hail to the King game. And uh, so anyway, I, we got really stomped right here, so I didn't really get to show you all a lot of the, um, you know, what it's like to really capture one of these areas and... and you know how it's done but it's just like uh, any other capture the flag you get on on a on the spawn point or on the the capture point and the longer you stay there the the more points you get um, here you can see I, I mean I'm still having a hard time um, really controlling the character which uh, I never really got uh, very good at um, but you know, like I said, this is an old school first person shooter where, where you um, you got to pick up these guns. So knowing where these things are, knowing the maps, I mean you definitely have an advantage over somebody that was new to the game uh, like me. Um, you know, and, and the maps in general, uh, you know, I think I played probably four or five total. And um, they were all fairly cheesy and just... I don't know. They they didn't look good. Uh, the game mechanics and and everything ab about this was really just just rough. Now there are parts like this where you'd run into a room and you've got some pretty cool guns that you can just start throwing missiles and things like that around. Uh, but it's not unlikely getting in a situation like that where you'll actually blow yourself up. Uh, now this was actually pretty funny. This was a uh, game type uh, that was based off of Capture the Flag, uh, but this was actually called Capture the Babe. So that girl right there is actually a flag, and you have to pick her up and run her from um, the enemy's flag point to uh, your flag point and uh, capture her. And you see, she starts waving her hand in your face here, and um, <laughs> I mean, it was childish and funny. A lot of the things that they were saying, but the fact that uh, in order to get her to calm down, uh, you'd have to spank her. 
which I thought was uh, which was pretty pretty funny. So you know they cr try to get away and they try to distract you. And in order to stop that, you punch A or whatever, and it spanks them. So I, I mean it was pretty childish and, and immature. Uh, but I will say you know whenever I figured out what was going on and what they were doing, I got a chuckle out of it. Um, but I you know it wouldn't take long for that that uh, funniness to uh, wear off, and then I'm back to being frustrated with the uh, game mechanics and uh, how the game actually plays so you know overall I think the multiplayer I really didn't like the game flow I didn't like um, I didn't like the mechanics I didn't like the spotty uh, twitchy controls that uh, was difficult to aim and the quick movements um, you know it was just uh, the maps themselves um, I didn't really care for um, much of much of the multiplayer. In fact, it didn't take me long to really get frustrated and, and move on to just the campaign. And uh, that's what I've got next here for you as soon as I get shrunk by a shrunk ray and stomped right there by that guy. Um, we're going to move on to some clips of some of the campaign. So I got finally tired of the multiplayer and decided I was going to move um, into the single player. Um, now, really quick, a little bit about the game. Uh, and I don't know for what reason that they did this, but for some reason on the Xbox, uh, it was considered, it was set out at 1080. And for the PS3, it was at 720. So I thought that was kind of, that was kind of odd. Um, here you see I just got finished. I mean, I'm trying to show you guys some of the different things, but I just took a pack of steroids. You can take beer, whiskey, and they all have different effects on you. This one kind of makes you invincible, and you run around and one-hit punch people, and they just disintegrate. Um, which, again, childish and you know not necessarily promoting good things, but you know it, it's it's pretty funny. Um, anyway, back to to the, to the graphics. So the graphics. I, I mean, I really wasn't impressed with the graphics. Um, at this game and I, I don't know I mean you know it was something that I, I guess this game was really um, highly anticipated by a lot of people so I was excited about trying it and um, really disappointed um, whenever I found out just a, whenever I got to play the game um, you know initially the game had a very short tutorial it, I, I didn't really give you much insight on how you play the game I mean Put it this way, you start off, the very first scene is it shows you how to take a leak in a urinal. And um, and you run around for a second and and then it you draw a draw on a on a dry erase board for some reason, and then you jump into shooting rockets at a monster. So I'm not really sure what exactly the tutorial beginning chapter was trying to point out. Uh, but it really didn't teach me a lot about the the game and the navigation in the campaign was was pretty bad it was it was really hard to figure out uh, where I was supposed to go um, which I, I don't know if that's necessarily a, a bad thing it, as long as where the next point you're supposed to go to makes sense or or is somewhat obvious um, but y you know they didn't really do a good job of uh, I mean really pointing you in the right direction or or giving you hints if you're having a hard time getting stuck or y you know doing that I, I mean there was a lot of times that I would end up running around in circles just trying to figure out what the next thing I was supposed to do was so um, you know my aim is still off here I, I got this down to um, a one and you can see on my long distance shots I'm still up still off um, you know and it didn't figure out it didn't take too very long to figure out that the um, I, I don't really think uh, there was a lot of thought given into or a lot of testing I, I don't know or a lot of experience uh, gamers that went into playing making this game I, I'm not really sure uh, to be completely honest overall I, I think um, the good things about Duke Nukem uh, forever was uh, Duke himself uh, Duke's one-liners I mean they're they're pretty funny and uh, I will say he is absolutely the most egotistical person that anyone really could ever dream up of and uh, you know so it was pretty funny and the, and the fact that um, everybody that you run into or that I've run into so far in the game uh, absolutely just worships him which I think is um, is hilarious um, the bad things uh, you know number one uh, again I've mentioned the graphics the graphics were horrible or not horrible but they just I think they could have been better um, it wasn't it, good gameplay uh, for me. I didn't enjoy the multiplayer. I, I didn't enjoy the campaign. Uh, the extras I messed around with, um, but they were just kind of ridiculous. Uh, there was a, a um, 
uh, his house that you could go and actually unlock things. Uh, but, you know, in, in order for me to want to do that, I'd want to have to actually play the game. So I don't plan on, on going in and trying to, to unlock any of that. So I think it was just... Um, and then, of course, the, the there was a lot of crude and childish humor, which I don't necessarily mind. Uh, I can overlook. I don't care for it, but I can overlook it if it's a, a good game. And overall, I mean, I just really didn't didn't think this was a good game at all. Very, very overrated. Um, yeah, just for, for instance, something that was funny was that, uh, so after playing this game, I thought, am I just the only person that think this? Well, it turns out that I actually went to IGN, and uh, it was rated at a 5.5 on IGN, and then at a 3.0 on GameSpot. So evidently, I'm not the only one um, that, uh, that feels this way. So anyway, uh, I wouldn't definitely suggest spending the money on it and I wouldn't even, you know, rent it for free. If somebody, I don't know, paid you to take the, the game, then, then maybe, but it's just an all around bad game, guys. I hate to say that, but it really was. Um, so I, I really, uh, you know, I initially said, I don't really want to spend my time doing a full review on this game. I initially had mentioned that I would either do Red Faction Infamous or, or Duke Nukem. Um, but after playing this for just a little while, I, I, you know, my initial impressions, they can sometimes be wrong, but I don't think that they're going to be that wrong. If this game gets any better, uh, I don't think it can get a lot better, and I really don't want to waste my time or um, your time trying to do a full review on this. So um, if you guys would like, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description, and as you saw in the game, I gave links to the other um, initial thoughts for Red Faction and uh, Infamous 2. If you guys would like for me to uh, do one on that, a uh, complete review on any of those, I'd be happy to. But anyway, guys, I'm sorry I had to bring you guys some bad news, and I hope you guys, I hope this will um, save somebody from actually purchasing it. But if you like this, feel free to rate, comment, or subscribe, guys. Until next time, this is The Average Gamer. I am out. Later.